Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. And I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services. First Sunday, January the 27th, we will sing several songs from Songs of Faith and Praise. If you do not have that book, I will give you the title so that you can either Google it or if you have a different book, you can find it. And hopefully you'll sing along with us. We will observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a short message for you that I hope will be uh, beneficial to you, as it was to me as I prepared it. The first song that we're going to sing is number 704. The title is Bind Us Together. Bind Us Together, 704. <clears throat> Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King. There is only one body, that is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. If you will turn to number 845, 845, the title of this song is Gentle Shepherd, Gentle Shepherd, 845. <clears throat> Gentle shepherd, come and lead us. For we need you to help us find our way. Gentle shepherd, come and feed us. For we need your strength in day to day. There's no other. We can turn to who can help us to face another day. Gentle shepherd, come and lead us, for we need you to help us find our way. The song to help us prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper is number 335. 335, in memory of the Savior's love. 335, in memory of the Savior's love. <clears throat> In memory of the Savior's love, we keep the sacred feast. Where every humble, contrite heart is made a welcome guest. By faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. The cup in token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath this banner thus we sing the wonders of his love. And here and 
anticipate by faith the heavenly feast of all. We come to the part of the service where we gather about the Lord's table as we are instructed to do every first day of the week. Every first day of the week, we are to commemorate the death and the burial of our Savior, Jesus Christ, to understand why he went to the cross, to understand all of the ramifications, all of the implications that came with his dying. We know that it was part of God's plan. We know that that uh, God uh, allowed his son to leave his right side, uh, to come down to earth uh, in human form, yet with divine power. We we understand all of that, I pray. And I pray that uh, we understand that as the priests made uh, sacrifices for the people under the old law, that Jesus came to complete this in the new covenant. He came so that we might have life and that that life would be because of his death. And so we gather about the table. Uh, the symbols here before us are the bread uh, symbolizing his body and the fruit of the vine symbolizing his blood. Let's uh, pray for the body of our Lord. We just thank you so much, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, you are willing to send your son to us, send him to a sinful world, send him so that we might find uh, a chance to live with you eternally because of that wonderful sacrifice that uh, Jesus submitted to. Help us to think of his body writhing in pain on the cross. Help us to understand that he gave his body in our stead. As we take of this bread, help us to think of those things as we pray it in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. As in the old law, under the old law, uh, the blood of animals was shed as, as an atonement. But we understand that the blood that Jesus shed was forgiveness for forgiveness of sins. We understand that the blood of Jesus doesn't atone for our sins, but washes them away. Help us to be the forgiving people uh, that Jesus was in his life and help us to understand that the blood he shed was to understand those lessons about forgiveness. Be with us as we partake. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. And it's at this time in our service that we also fulfill another of our obligations as the Lord's Supper is completed, uh, we uh, focus on the part of our service that is all about giving, uh, the contribution. We are told in various places about uh, giving back to the Lord. And in all cases, uh, it talks about giving as we have prospered. Uh, we, we know that there are examples of giving where people gave beyond what they had prospered as the widow as she put those two small coins in the treasury, as the Macedonians that gave even though they were in need. Help us that uh, we might also be those type of givers, the givers with a cheerful heart, the givers that have <laughs> planned to give so that God's work can be carried out on this earth. Let's pray. We're realistic, dear Heavenly Father, in knowing that it takes money to uh, support a church. It takes money to uh, uh, have a place to meet each week. And it does indeed take money to uh, send the word out to other people to hopefully evangelize. It takes money to help the needy. And we just pray that uh, we would think in those terms as we give. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, before we give of our monies, 
to think of giving of ourselves in whatever way that we can, that so that Jesus' mission on earth would have not been in vain, that, um, that as a church of which he is the foundation, will do what it's supposed to do as, as his kingdom here on earth. I pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song that we'll sing is number 771. It's an old song. The title of this song is Lord, Speak to Me. Lord, Speak to Me, number 771. <clears throat> Lord, speak to me that I may speak in living echoes of thy tongue. As thou hast sought, so let me seek thy erring children lost and long. All strengthen me that while I stand firm on the rock and strong in thee, I may stretch out a loving hand to wrestlers with the troubled sea. Oh, teach me, Lord, that I may teach the precious things Thou dost impart. And wing my words that they may reach the head and depths of many a heart. Oh, fill me with thy wholeness, Lord. Until my very heart o'erflow In gendling thought and glowing word Thy love to tell, thy praise to show you've enjoyed singing uh, with us. Uh, I know the Lord was glorified, and I hope you were uplifted through the song. Uh, I pray that you would continue uh, to be with us as we praise the Lord, and we come to this part of the service uh, where I'm going to deliver a short message to you. If you were there this morning, you know that uh, the title of the lesson this evening is, Will Our Desires Be Fulfilled? Or frustrated. The scripture for the lesson uh, this evening uh, comes from Proverbs. It comes from Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24 and 28. Okay, Proverbs 10, 24 and 28. It says, The fear of the wicked will come upon him, and the desire of the righteousness will be granted. The hope of the righteous will be gladness, but the expectation of the wicked will perish. If you want to mark that, that is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24 and verse 28. All right. Uh, what is it about sin that God detests? What is it about sin 
that each of us ought to try with all of our might to, to avoid. Well, there is a sense in which it is only the deceitful, I'm sorry, that is uh, only the righteous who will get what they want. All right? That, does that does that make sense? There is a sense in which it is only the righteous who will uh, get what they want. In other words, those who have somehow circumvented God's will to obtain their desires find the satisfaction of their desires did not bring them fulfillment, but frustration. Frustration's a funny word, isn't it? Have you been frustrated in your life on some levels? It's not fun to be frustrated. When we're frustrated, uh, we're kind of tied up in knots. And, and sometimes we just don't know how, where to turn. Now, here's where the deceitfulness of sin comes in. The deceitfulness of sin takes desires that God gave us and persuades us to fulfill them in some illegitimate way. Does that make sense to you? That we would fulfill those things that God has actually gave to us and, and wants us to have. But we fulfill them by circumventing God's will and think that we can do that in some illegitimate way. I guess sexual desire is one of those things at the top of the list. I think God gave that sexual desire to males and females of the human species. However, he also set the boundaries and set the rules as to how these sexual desires can be fulfilled and can be accomplished. When we fulfill that desire in ways that God has forbidden, not only do we sin, but we fail to get the thing that we actually thought we were after. Now, there are things in life that we do for pleasure. Uh, uh, sexual relations is one of those things. It's just one of a, a myriad of things. We, we go to amusement parks for moments of pleasure. You know, that roller coaster ride where you're all the way at the top of the hill and you just come careening down. Or some of those rides that actually loop and turn us upside down. We pay <laughs> seemingly exorbitant amount of money to be titillated for a very, very, very short period of time. Yet people keep coming to amusement parks. Why? Because they like that feeling. And in one sense, it is only the feeling that they can get from perhaps this, this ride. When the ride doesn't fulfill us, when we don't get the pleasure from the ride that we thought we would, we probably don't ride it anymore. For example, at amusement parks, there are rides for little kids. And they go around in circles. They are not especially titillating, but for little three and four-year-olds, they're glorious. And so, as adults, we may not get the same sense of uh, fulfillment or the same sense of uh, genuine pleasure from that particular ride. Now, 
what happens as far as sexual morality is concerned. That we know that the fulfillment of that is momentarily pleasurable. But if we follow God's rules and if we follow God's laws, no amount of sexual immorality will ever be as gratifying in the long run as committed love within a marriage relationship. Because what we find is that there is more than these desires and these momentary, momentary pleasures that are involved. Now, that's simply one example. There are a myriad of examples in which people are pleasure seekers. And you know what? God doesn't want us to necessarily have a humdrum life. In John chapter 10 and verse 10, it says the thief comes to steal and destroy, but he says, I come to give you life, to give you life more abundantly. Now, to me, I kind of translate that as, I want you to have some fun in your life. I want you to have the, the physical pleasures that come with being living and breathing homo sapiens, you know, human beings that have the ability to achieve uh, pleasurable moments. When we fill it in God-appointed ways, what do we do? We get what we want. When we fulfill it in forbidden ways, we eventually wind up frustrated. When a person in a marriage relationship goes outside of the relationship to fill pleasure, it has ramifications to it. It doesn't mean that the physical pleasure is not as gratifying. What it means is that we have achieved that in an immoral way. And with that being said, uh, we'll eventually find ourselves frustrated. We can go back to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 24 and 28, because it says the hope of the righteous will be gladness, right? The hope of the righteous will be gladness but the expectation of the wicked will perish. They may be trying to get to the same pleasure. They are just taking the wrong path to get to that pleasure. I have found in my life, and you know, uh, it may be an, an idiosyncrasy of mine, to find that the some of the most difficult people to deal with, that are people that are both arrogant and or smug. I've used that term smug in a long time to describe, uh, especially, you know, in, in, in theater and sports or what, the attitude of people when it comes to their abilities. It's, it's arrogant to presume that we can take whatever we want, however we wish to get it, and then enjoy it as much as we want. That's an arrogant attitude. We may, in fact, take whatever we want, but God has it within his power to withhold from us the enjoyment of what we've taken. Again, does that make sense to us? Let's turn to Ecclesiastes, all right? Let's turn to Ecclesiastes to, to help maybe clear this up a little bit. Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19. It says, Furthermore, as for every man to whom God has given riches and wealth, he has also empowered him to eat from them 
and to receive his reward and rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. God doesn't keep us from trying to strive to, to be more comfortable in life, but he expects us to live within those boundaries. And if we go down a little bit further into chapter 6 and verse 2, we get the futility part of this. Ecclesiastes 6, verse 2. A man to whom God has given riches and wealth and honor so that his soul lacks nothing of all that he desires, yet God has not empowered him to eat from them, for a foreigner enjoys them. This is vanity and a severe affliction. You see, we're, we're supposed to use those gifts from God, but use them in the way that God wants us to use them. It's the way it works in a church. We have people of different abilities accomplishing different tasks to help God's kingdom here on earth work the way it's supposed to work. Uh, getting what we want sometimes may be harder than we think. And if we get it the wrong way, it will lead us into frustration. As we get near the end of this lesson, I believe that there are two things here that are needful. All right? Now follow my logic here. I hope it's not convoluted logic. Number one, we need to be grateful for the hopes and the aspirations and desires that God has planted within our hearts. He hasn't given us a life in which we can have some fun. We have bodies that can sense pleasure. If it comes from eating, if it comes from some uh, physical exertion and our part, that we can achieve some satisfaction. However, number two, we need to be willing for those desires to be fulfilled on his terms. You know, in all major sports activities that I know of, there are rules. And if rules are not abided by, the person that is not abiding by the rules will be punished. Right? Whether it's football, baseball, hockey, you know, name it, golf, uh, uh, tennis, all of those, there are rules. And the rules must be abided by. When they're not, punishment comes in. And this is where frustration happens. You know, what we need to understand is God wants what's best for us. He, he did that by sending his son here to earth to be the master teacher, the master healer. And then ultimately, as we uh, uh, just recounted in our Lord's Supper service a few minutes ago, to, to die for our sins. God wants nothing but the best. But to seek anything but his will in our lives puts our feet on a path that will lead to disappointment. Because we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of God. We're all going to be recompensed for what we've done within the body. And, and many of those things are pleasurable things. And God has not withheld those from us as long as they are in the framework of how God has set them down for us. If not, Rather than being fulfilled, our desires will be frustrated. I'd like to 
read a quote from a wise man by the name of George MacDonald. And he said this, and I'll give you this quote uh, if you want it. I'll share it with you. If you hear this lesson and you want it, I'll, I'll say it again. Man finds it hard to get what he wants because he does not want the best. God finds it hard to give because he would give the best and man will not take it. See, God wants to give us the best, but we have to want that best that God wants to give us. God wants us to live with him eternally. He wishes that no man would walk down the wrong path, that all would come to the knowledge of him and through his son. That's what he wants. And with that, uh, our lesson comes full cycle. If we don't fulfill God's plan for us to spend eternity with him, we will be frustrated at Judgment Day because we will not have done what God has instructed us to do. In order to achieve that goal, we must be in obedience to God's rules that he has set forth in his word. We have to look at our lives and say, I want to be a child of God. I want to be a follower of Jesus, the perfect example. And with that, I will confess that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. I'll think of the things that I did before that were not under the auspices of God, even though they may have been pleasurable things, but I did not do them within the framework that God required. And I will repent of those and know that God will forgive them. And finally, as an act of obedience, as part of the plan of salvation, I'll be baptized for the remission of our sins. If you have that need this evening, we are ready to help you. If you need to take the Lord into obedience through confession, repentance, and baptism, just get in touch with us and we will help you in any way that we can. I hope this lesson was beneficial to you. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the time that we've had together. Help us, dear God, to, to live in accordance with your will. You have given us bodies which can feel pain, but can also feel pleasure. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, that we will take you at your word when you have told us that you've come to give us life more abundantly. Bless us in our walk on the earth. Help us, dear God, to walk in the way that you want us to walk so that your will will indeed be fulfilled. Bless us on our walk. Help us to take others with us Help us to be the example for those around us. For when they see us doing the will of God within the framework of how God wants us to do that, they'll know that, that we are your children. Bless us in trying to be the example that we should be. As we uh, rest this evening, help us to rest with God on our mind to awaken with God on our mind. Be with us. Help us to look forward to the next time that we meet together. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. I pray that all of you will be safe and may God bless you all.